The base of our party is so pleased with the president right now. I just can't imagine anyone running against a record like this. And this is just the first year. Imagine where we'll, where we'll be next November. That's Ronna McDaniel, the head of the RNC yesterday, dismissing the possibility of a primary challenge to President Trump after Senator Jeff Flake refused to rule out a presidential run earlier this week. But the president does have a number of weaknesses that could inspire such a primary challenge. According to data from Gallup and the NBC News Wall Street Journal poll, President Trump has the lowest approval rating of any president at this point in his term. Democrats currently enjoy an 11-point advantage in who Americans want to see win control of Congress in the 2018 midterms. And the Republican Party has suffered a string of setbacks, including the loss of a U.S. Senate seat in Alabama and at least 14 state legislative seats. Republicans lost the Virginia governor's race by a larger margin than in 2016 in the presidential race, while suffering local defeats in what had been their Pennsylvania and New York strongholds. And Gallup found the number of self-identified Republicans dropped five points to 37 percent of Americans. Joining the table, we have former governor of Vermont and the former chairman of the Democratic National Committee, Howard Dean. Governor, good to see you. Thanks for having me on. So if you were the chairman of the DNC today, how excited would you be about the prospect of taking back control of Congress in 2018? Uh, uh, it's going to happen, um, but it's going to happen probably because the field organization is actually built by the people who vote for us who are not actually necessarily right. Democrats. I mean, we won Virginia. The DNC did a good job in Virginia, but we won Virginia because of groups like Run for Something and Indivisible and Color of Change and Voto Latino, which is an incredible ad. Uh, and so the question is, how do you coordinate all these groups? Because these kids don't believe in institutions, but they're unbelievably powerful. Do you worry at all that, um, the, the, let's take Alabama, for example, it might have been a case of a terrible candidate winning, uh, losing, and that's why the Democrat took back the seat. In other words, is all this enthusiasm at the grassroots going to translate into sweeping electoral victories? It will. Victories? Um, in Alabama, it was interesting, is uh, black women voted 98%. Yeah. Uh, for uh, Doug Jones. Doug Jones is going to be a good senator and he's going to be an incumbent. So he still has an uphill climb, but I think he can hold that seat. What do you think? Do you think this is a, a wave election year, Susan, for Democrats? It's looking that way, and especially when you talk about some of the local races in Pennsylvania and New York strongholds. For example, in Westchester County, with the highest property taxes in the in the country, which is going to get killed by this recent tax bill, um, they had 46 percent more Dem people voting on the Democratic line in 2017 than in 2013. 46 percent turnout. That's in, in Nassau County, similar way, 31 percent. Now, it's interesting, Bill de Blasio got 10,000 less votes because I, you know, the, his popularity numbers were down, so it wasn't a progressive thing. It was a woman and independent turnout thing voting against President Trump. That's the only way those numbers kind of match up. Well, in fairness, the county executive in Nassau who was is on his way to jail. Well, no, but it was <laughs> yeah, but, but it was a Republican stronghold. That's true. It had That's been true. for for That's decades, true. and you had a viable, strong, viable Republican in there. When you look at the turnout numbers, so, and that would explain kind of the losses. But the turnout numbers about independents and women no. showing up at the polls, matching what happened in Virginia, matching under different circumstances in Alabama, because I do think that's an outlier, but Virginia, Pennsylvania, New York, those kind of races where the turnout is so drastically skewed, I think that leads to what people are expecting when it comes to a wave election. And what about the message of the Democratic Party, Howard Dean? That was the, the criticism in 2016, is that it wasn't clear what Hillary oh, it's was always running a criticism. for. This is moaning and groaning <laughs> inside the beltway. Look, here's the... No, no, no. It's from people who didn't support Hillary Clinton, who voted, oh, who it, voted it, flip yeah, from Obama I, I, you know, I mean, yeah, but, to Donald Trump. Oh, no. I think we had a message problem in, yeah. in 2016. That's what I mean. So what's okay. the message in 18? In, uh, two, well, the, this is how it works. It, and this is how it worked against Obama. In the off-year elections for Congress, your message is, I'm not the president. Right. And that's all you need. Now, we're going to have more of that than the message I would hope we're going to have. Actually, I hope we adopt some of the economic populism that Trump claimed that he was going to do and then, of course, screwed all the people who voted for him. But um, in 2018, not being Donald Trump is enough. And the corruption, the Republican Party is going to get nailed with corruption because of the tax bill. Fourteen senators, Republican senators who voted for that tax bill are making a million dollars or more, sometimes up to $10 million off a provision that was slipped in at the last minute by Orrin Hatch. You cannot be voting to line your own pockets. People don't like that. I don't care what party you're in. So they're going to really have a headwind. In 2020, you cannot win the presidency without a positive message about what you're going to do. 
I don't care how unpopular. I think Trump is not going to get a challenge. Why? He, because he's got total control of the yeah. Republican no, I base. I totally disagree. It, it, I think he's going to get a challenge, even if it's from a Republican of an independent be, uh, you know, bent who's seems, looking to make well, a He point. may get a challenge. He's going to get like, run over. It seems, yes, that I agree with. It seems like the simplest uh, maneuver for a ambitious, centrist-minded Republican right now. You have, there's all these profiles of Trump country and why voters are sticking with him, but the statistics show that, in fact, he is bleeding Republican voters. And he's bleeding Republican voters who are tired of his policies, but also his actions, his tweeting, whatever. And if you're a ambitious-minded Republican who wants to make a national name for yourself, the simplest thing you can do is actually it's make true. a primary run. Especially where they're You will get primary. killed. You will get crushed, right. but you will become the face of the opposition well, the first much thing the way that Joe Lieberman was for Democrats. The first thing you have to do, do is Ox. win your re-election, right? So, so there's a lot of people who are wanting to win re-election in sure. 2018 who are not rocking the boat. Right. And then after 2018, you'll see some people rock the boat. But look, this... This sets up in every way. Uh, if this is going to be about Trump, then it's going to be a Democratic year. It, because the, the party in power usually loses seats, it's going to be a Democratic year. Um, so, you know, we'll see. But uh, Americans like divided government, and I think they will check the president. So let's talk about, Howard, where the progressive movement is right now. As somebody who so, uh, has represented it and been invested in it, from the Women's March forward, it has been a year of energy for progressive groups. How does that translate going forward? Can they keep up that energy? Well, I actually think the progressives are in the, uh, in the process of informally taking over the Democratic Party. Um, I think the country has moved to the left. It's shocking to me, but a majority of Americans think Medicare for all is a good idea. I mean, and that, frankly, Bernie gets a lot of credit for that. I don't think he's going to be the next nominee, but he could be. Um, but I, because I'm very much for somebody who's younger, I think my generation's got to get the hell out of politics, start coaching and, and start moving up this next generation so that who are more, I think, fiscally sane. Neither Republicans or Democrats can claim they're fiscally responsible anymore after what the Republicans just did in this tax bill. And this generation, this young generation is going to pay for that if we don't get the hell out of the way. And so that means no Bernie Sanders, no Joe Biden, for example. They running. may well run. I'm yeah. going to be supporting somebody who's younger in the next generation. Who I don't know who it is yet, but I'm going to. I was going to say, do you have anybody in mind yet? It's I, too early. There, I think there's a bunch of people that are terrific, and there's more people that aren't on my list who are terrific. Uh, Chris Murphy from Pennsylvania. I mean, from uh, Connecticut. Connecticut. Um, uh, Kamala Harris, of course. Kirsten Gillibrand. Um, I mean, there's, there's Eric Garcetti from Los Angeles, a bit of a long shot, but Trump's broken the rules. You now mayors may have a shot. And there's, look, there's tons of other young people. We were joking before the show, Sam and I, 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 I think, or this segment, and I wouldn't be surprised if you saw 17 people running. Yeah. Yeah. Look a little bit like the Republican primary last well, time Well, hopefully around, there won't right? be any people who aren't, who are just, you know, in there for the fun of it. Governor Dean, always good to see you. <laughs> who end up winning? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> right, who end up winning? Right. Touche. Become president. Governor, good to see you. Good luck with that cold in Vermont up there today. Thank you. Coming up next, New York City marks a major milestone, something not seen in generations. We'll explain that next. Thanks for checking out MSNBC on YouTube. And make sure you subscribe to stay up to date on the day's biggest stories. And you can click on any of the videos around us to watch more for Morning Joe and MSNBC. Thanks so much for watching.